will it live up to or outshine the original. Let's go to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, the time has come for the rematch special attraction the boxing world has been waiting for. And now, prepare to welcome the boxers as they make their way to the ring. Introducing first, the former world champion from Sacramento, currently ranked the number three contender. Please welcome, now making his way to the ring, Diego Chico Corrales. Ladies and gentlemen, making his way to the ring, the former world champion from Miami, currently ranked the number one contender, introducing Joel El Cepillo Casamayor. Mayor wants to leave, no doubt, but it had to be a strange feeling walking in without Joe Goosen for the first time in four years and knowing he's now with the enemy. Well, you know, he's the one that created that, and right now he is staring at Goosen and Diego Corrales. He's issuing the challenge. The gauntlet's being thrown down quite clearly. Will his dismissal of Goosen come back to haunt? <laughs> Corrales, meanwhile, a big puncher who was hurt in the first fight by Casamayor. Will that prey on his mind? What about his confidence level? Well, you know, when you're presumed to be the big puncher and you get knocked down a couple times and hurt as Corrales was in that last fight, it can impact your confidence. But he told Joe 
Ferguson five days ago. He's more focused for this fight than any other. We have already seen some great drama in that ring, and we presume there's more to come. And physically, Corrales and Casamayor look in excellent shape. Corrales' mouth, he says, is completely healed from the problems incurred in the first fight. He has a different mouthpiece, a much softer one. To the numbers, Corrales has the youth by six years. Chico Tall for his weight class, a three and a half inch height advantage, yet the reach nearly even. And yesterday's win, both came in at 130. And the notable rules for this championship fight. No standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If an accidental headbutt occurs before the end of the fourth round, it's a no decision. After the end of four, they go to the cards. And remember, Corrales was cut over the left eye on a clash of heads in the first round of the first fight. So here at Foxwoods in Connecticut, we're getting ready for our main event, the rematch between Joel Casamayor and Diego Corrales for the vacant WBO 130-pound championship. Let's get the official introductions from our ring announcer, the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Connecticut as it's time for our featured bout of the evening brought to you by Cedric Kushner Promotions in association with Team Freedom, Gary Shaw Productions, the undisputed king of beers, Budweiser, and Showtime. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the WBO, President Francisco Valcarcel, Supervisor Stan Gallup, the IBA, President Dean Chance, and Supervisor Bob Duffy, along with the Mashantucket Pequot Athletic Commission, the Chairman Joey Carter, Vice Chairman Richard Butler, Executive Director Joe Letillier, and Commissioner Peter Timothy. Our physicians at ringside, Dr. Michael Schwartz, Dr. Anthony Alessi, and Dr. Kevin McGuire, with our timekeepers at the bell, also keeping count of the knockdowns, Lou Dell and Phyllis Roy. Introducing our judges, scoring this bout from ringside, from West Nyack, New York, Julie Letterman, from Port Charlotte, Florida, Donald O'Neill, and from Rivervale, New Jersey, Stephen Weisfeld. Our third man to the ring, the referee in charge of the action, Working in this his 106th world title bout, Steve Smoker. All right, fans, here we go with our main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the IBA and the vacant WBO Junior Lightweight Championship of the world. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Foxwoods Resort Casino, it's showtime! Introducing to you first on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue trunks with silver trim, fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, by way of Sacramento, California. He weighed in at the junior lightweight limit of 130 pounds even. His record stands at 37 wins. Two losses with 31 big wins coming by way of knockout. Currently ranked number three in the world by the WBO. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the former IBF junior lightweight champion of the world. Introducing Diego Chico Corrales. the ring on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks with blue trim, fighting out of Miami, Florida, by way of Guantanamo, Cuba. He weighed in the same as his opponent, 130 pounds even. His outstanding record includes 31 wins, one defeat, 19 wins coming by way of knockout. As the defending IBA 130-pound champion, he is ranked the number one WBO junior lightweight world contender. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former WBA super featherweight champion of the world, introducing 
Once again, Steve Smoger is our referee in charge. 12 rounds of boxing scheduled. Gentlemen, you are given your instructions both in Spanish and English. Obey my commands, respect the bell, and above all, protect yourself at all times. Comprende todo. Your, your trunks are fine where they are. Touch gloves, touch. Gracias, thank you. You okay? Well, the way Joel Casamayor and Buddy McGirt sound, Casamayor will look to take the sweet science to a new level in this rematch. If that happens, perhaps the only hope for Diego Corrales would be for Casamayor to lose his focus and step in to fight. Steve Smoger, the third man of the ring, and here we go, Al. You know, in a certain way, though, there's mixed messages here because Casamayor was so bold uh, in the ring before this fight, and we've heard he and a number of his uh, people in his camp suggesting he's going to win by knockout in the fourth or fifth round. So these mixed messages create a very interesting scenario. But right now, of course, he is boxing as he did throughout most of their first match. Morales' power combined with a, a leaky defense, a formula for fireworks. Yes, he does have problems with slick mover types like Casamayor, but he has that very exciting ability to bail himself out with one explosive punch. Casamayor in the white, Corrales in the blue. For the WBO 130-pound championship scheduled for 12, if the first fight was that good with no title at stake, imagine the possibilities here. Corrales is so far not cutting off the ring too effectively, but he's showing a commitment to get that left hook in. And for the first time, Casamayor throws the left and it lands. And that left was very successful in the first fight. There's another one that got through to the chin of Corrales. It was Corrales who got off to the fast start in the first fight. He rocked Casamayor, and then Corrales sustaining a cut over his left eye and a clash of heads, which slowed him down. It looks like it's Casamayor, normally not a fast starter and vulnerable early historically, getting off to the fast start here. Those two straight lefts were probably the best punches of the round. But here's the thing for Corrales right now. He's almost finding the range for that left hook. He is very, very close to doing it. And he dropped Casamayor with that left in round four of the first fight, a candidate for round of the year. The problem with Corrales is the same as in the first fight, though. He's not stopping Casamayor's movement when Casamayor moves to his right. And so he's not putting himself in position to land that hook as effectively as he might. Under a minute remaining in round one. There's a good right by Corrales right on the nose. Casamayor walking right into it. Casamayor said the times he got tagged by Corrales in the first fight was when he scored. He hurt Corrales and then got careless. So he must guard against that here. Very close first round, though, because Corrales has been the aggressor, and while there have been two showy punches by Casamayor, Corrales has landed several himself, and he's thrown many more punches. Corrales trying to back Casamayor into the corner as we head for the bell in the opening round. still want you to keep that chin tucked, okay? okay? Now remember, you've got to come off a little bit harder on that side, right? Okay, okay. that's number one. Number two, you're using the jab good. Feign it, use it, feign it, use it. Do you hear me? Yes. Now let's look for a little body with that right hand every so often. Surprise him. Okay. You're going to sneak that right hand in the body. Go high with the jab right there and get out, okay? okay. I want you to cut him off hard on this side and move him into that left hook. Okay. We're looking to double up on that left hook. He's yeah. getting under it. Okay. Get his arm out. In the first round, Casamayor was able to do what he did many times in the first fight, and that is land the straight left hand. And there was the right hand low again by Corrales, and some more left hands got in. So that's a recurring theme and one that Corrales would like to stop. Sage advice from Corrales' new trainer, Casamayor's old trainer, Joe Goosen, telling uh, Chico Corrales to double up on the left hook and use the right more. 
The left hook, very effective against southpaws for a conventional fighter, but of course the right hand also a very effective punch for a right-hander against a lefty. The missing component right now for Corrales is that left to the body. They want a right to the body, but it's, this is going to be a very difficult fight to win if he doesn't rip those hooks. That's what you need to do. You rip the hook down there, the then it will open up the hook to the head. And, and Casamayor, there is, in the dictionary, next to slick left-hander is his picture. So if, if you're going to beat a lefty, you have to fight the perfect fight against the lefty against him. He knows what to do. Good jab by Casamayor. These two 130-pounders are using all of this 20-foot square ring. Don't punch. No, no. Oh, man. Behind the head. Watch behind the head. Okay. Well, early warnings from the personable Steve Smoger about Casamayor's holding behind the head, which is something he had a point deducted for in the first fight after he had knocked Corrales down. And by the way, Steve Smoger, as good a referee as you will ever see in a boxing room anywhere, anytime. He's spectacular. So uh, no one should have complaints about his refereeing in this fight. They are in very capable hands. Push him off, push him off. That's it. Corrales with aggression. And back comes Casimir with the left the hand. Hurt, don't punch. Corrales' defense on the inside is lacking as it was from time to time in the first fight. When he attacks, he's just forgetting defense. Corrales said he wasn't so much impressed with the power of Casamayor in the first fight as Casamayor gets off balance momentarily. A right hand now by uh, Corrales. It was the speed of Casamayor's punches he was impressed with. That was a good left hook by Corrales. It didn't land perfectly, but it got there. It certainly got Casamayor's attention. And it's got to give confidence to Sacramento native Diego Corrales. Now there was a counter right hand by Corrales. A very big moment in this fight over a left by Casamayor. He hasn't done that in any of the rounds so far. We've seen these men in against each other. That could be a very important punch if he keeps doing it. Corrales digging into the chest. You see the size difference, so obvious. Corrales so tall at 5'10 and a half. Here's what, let me tell you what Joe Goosen's added for this fight, or at least what he's doing that he didn't. That's the counter straight right hand. Very important weapon for Corrales. They're trying to counter your jab with the hook. Okay, now you got to start putting a little more, little more jabs together now. Okay, okay, relax, relax, baby, relax. Okay. Okay, when you get close to him, you got to start digging the body a little Cuando more. Cae cerca, abajo. Don't look for the one punch. No busco solo golpe, vamos. Okay, don't look for the one punch. Take your time. You're trying too hard. Está bien, está tratando muy fuerte. Tranquilo. Okay, don't try so hard. Relax. Relájate, okay. relájate. Mantén las manos arriba y mueve la cabeza. You got to keep, you got to keep this hand up because they're trying to throw the hook. They're going to throw a double hook over there. Ellos van a tratar de tirar tu doble gancho, un doble swing, ¿ok? Okay, so sometimes feign but keep Corrales it up. Corrales was able to counter punch at moments in this round now there you see that that's a very important weapon for Corrales over the left hand of Casamayor if he can continue to do that in this fight he will make Casamayor very leery of throwing that left hand Buddy McGirt reminding Joel Casamayor not to slip into bad habits things that got him into some trouble in the first fight Just underway, round three, scheduled for 12 for the WBO 130-pound championship. Casamayor now pushing forward a little bit more. Nearly a low blow by, by Casamayor. Right on the belt. Steve Smoker keeping a close eye on the potential roughhouse tactics of Casamayor. You know, it's funny, Buddy McGirt said in the corner, beware, they're going to throw that double left hook to the body and the head, which, of course, I think is what they should be doing. But Corrales hasn't shown the inclination to do that very much. He's mostly throwing hooks to the head against Casamayor, and some are getting in there. And you heard Joe Goosen urging Corrales to double up. Combination. 
combination punching from Corrales. He's much sharper in this fight. His punching is crisper. It is more accurate. There's a difference. He spars with Sean Bay Mitchell, another uh, southpaw showed no deleterious effects as far as the mouth was concerned. Everything intact. You know, Casamayor is able to move to his right, which is where he wants to be. But even despite that, uh, Corrales is getting punches, even when he's not in good position to punch. Nice flurry by Corrales. Using both fists. So far in this fight, in the first fight, Casamayor's hand speed was better. In this fight, Corrales's has been, by and large, a little bit better. Of course, that can change. Casamayor mostly on the retreat since this fight began. Less than a minute, round three. It has been Corrales, the one coming forward. This was the Casamayor game plan that we expected, really. He was gonna box, use the ring, but he has not been able to counterpunch effectively from that posture. And Corrales has been very busy, much busier than he was in the first fight, and much more precise. Now going with the jab, looking to set up the power punch, the right. But he has power in both hands, as you know, if you follow his career. Corrales measuring Casamayor out. He's forcing Casamayor to attack and make himself vulnerable right now. And the bell to end round three. Okay, now you gotta start hitting that right hand. You gotta start laying there. Don't pull it away. Keep it right here. I want okay. you to shoot that one, okay? Okay. Good, good. Hey, you gotta keep the pressure on, smart pressure. I need that rhythm. If he comes at you, you gotta be able to step back and fire. Okay. Okay. Look for that right uppercut every so often, too. You gotta keep your chin tucked if you're gonna do it. Okay. Then I'll pop up. Okay. Look for it, because he's trying to get out down over here, down over there. Look for the uppercuts. Okay. Now the jab is the key here, baby. I want you to keep working. Stay. You see, when you step over hard, you was left. It's forcing him back that way. Right. You're using your jab, you gotta use that right hand, too. Okay. Once you use that right hand, you're getting under. Okay. You understand? Yes. All right, they're worried over there right now. Okay. You won the last three. Yeah, you won every round. Look at relax. Relax, take your time. Don't worry about it. Do it beautifully. Okay? Okay, baby, they're going to turn the uppercuts on the inside. Okay? Watch the uppercuts. Okay, baby? Give more face and double jabs to the chest. Al, you agree with Joe Goosen's assessment? Yeah, uh, one of the rounds was very close, but I think Corrales may have won every round uh, in terms of his aggression and uh, he's a little busy. Round one was in question, but I would agree he probably did win all the rounds so far. Well, you told Corrales the jab is the key, and also you got to land that right hand. There's nobody who knows Casamayor better than Joe Goosen. And uh, he knows the two or three things that cause Corrales problems. He says they're going to get around it. We shall see. You know, so I, far, so good. I am always leery of a right-handed fighter that pins his hopes against the lefty, mostly on his jab. Can I tell you, though, in this fight, it's the right strategy. And the jab of Corrales has definitely created lots of problems for Joel Casamayor, even when it doesn't land. That was a key for Corrales coming into this fight. He said he would really use the jab often, and it's paying off, like just there. Beautiful shotgun jab step, step, by step. Corrales. Corrales has to worry. Their heads are coming very close, and uh, let's be honest, we know that Casamayor is an expert on the inside with that head. There's a nice right uppercut on the jaw by Corrales. It's what Goosen was calling for after Casamayor through the left. The key in this fight is every time Casamayor throws a left hand, even if he doesn't always land, Corrales has some kind of answer. That is very different than the first fight. Corrales continues to follow Casamayor around in stalking fashion. Corrales looking the more impressive of the two in the early going. Low blow by Casamayor, but it was blocked. 
In the first fight, Casamayor was able to control rounds at long range while moving backwards. Not so in this one. You can see Corrales has picked up a few tricks here that's helped him so far. <laughs> Using that jab. <laughs> Not throwing the right though, holding back after the jab. <laughs> Lead right hand by uh, Corrales and a countering left by Casamayor. Both landed. Again, a round controlled by Corrales with his jab and more combination punches. And doing out. a nice job cutting out. off the ring is Corrales. Corrales in the blue, Casamayor in the white. It's for the vacant WBO 130-pound title vacated by Asselino Freitas. You see what he's seeing over there. It's only when you line up in the middle here he's able to come down there a little bit. Now, please. now look, when you get over here on this side and you're using that jab, look, look, look. You can ping bam right there. That little sweep right hand. He's looking for that, he's gonna slip it. Right. Look to use that little right hook, but you gotta do it off a jab. Right. You gotta blind him a little bit. Step in with that right hand when you're cutting him off on this side, you understand? Right. The jab is the key right now. Keep the pressure on. What is this, five? five. It's only five, baby. He's got a long way to go, do you hear me? You hear what I'm saying? He's got a long way to go, not you. You gotta make an effort to sneak some body shots in, okay? And when you do, you gotta roll out of them. You understand? Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's going your way. Do you feel it's going your way, baby? Yes, sir. You know it is. Yes, sir. It's a matter of time, just keep working. Just keep working. We do not back up. Let's go, Joe. Okay? Combination teacher, cheerleader, Joe Goosen. I'll tell you what, Al, by this time in their first fight back in October, both fighters had already touched the canvas. The danger in what Joe told him in the corner, though it, it's working, is if you throw that right hand downstairs to the body, even after a jab, you can be hit with a counter left. That's how much confidence they have in what Corrales is doing. They're willing to risk that, thinking that that jab will blind him, as Joe said, and he won't get countered Corrales when he throws the right to the body. We'll see. Morales continues to apply pressure. Using the jab. I would have bet you a million dollars that with the few number of left hooks Corrales has thrown in this, these first rounds, though he's thrown some good ones, that he would not have been able to control this fight this way. And he has done it with the jab, with the right hand to the body, the right uppercut, and the counter right to the head. Sort of taking Casamayor out of his precious rhythm. There's a good left hand in that exchange by Casamayor. Good counter punch by Casamayor. He needs a lot more of that because he's going to have to counter because Corrales keeps coming forward. But overall, Casamayor definitely not as uh, effective overall as he was to this point of the first fight. Nice left hook landing there by Corrales. You know, it's not as if everything he's throwing is getting there. Lots of those punches are missing. Some are being blocked, but he's throwing so many more that, than Casamayor that you have to feel like he's being more effective in these rounds. And I would say that those weeks spent uh, working with Sean Bay Mitchell had to be very beneficial to Corrales. He said, you know, when you spar with a guy like that, he makes you keep your A game all the way through. Good hook and a good left by Casamayor. Great exchange by these men. Casamayor's best offering of the night. Things beginning to really heat up now in round five. You know, Casamayor took a very good hook at the end of that exchange by Corrales and didn't flinch. Both guys with tremendous resolve. You certainly saw that at the end of the sixth round in the first fight, particularly by Corrales. Corrales having Casamayor in trouble at the, at the end of the round, and that's what made it that much more agonizing to stop it. One moment ago, Corrales threw the, the left hand and was waiting for, for Casamayor to counter with the left. He literally ducked before he even started throwing the left, and he ducked Casamayor's left. He's actually timing when Casamayor's throwing that left hand. Casamayor firing just after 
with the bell, but no connection. Hey, Donnie. Okay. Okay. Stay low and you gotta stop. Stay to the body. Mantén el cuerpo. Okay. Don't get in the slug fest. No, no le ve como nunca pelea con él todavía. Okay. Very good. Sigue trabajando bien. Okay, we gotta pick it up a little bit more this round. Just a little bit more. Tienen que poner un poquito más presión, un poquito más. Okay. Okay. The body shot when you land that body shot. Diego Corrales has thrown more combinations in this bout than he did in the first one. There's the good counter left hand. You see, he's continuing to throw, even when those combinations are missing, keeping Casamayor off balance. This is the best hand speed we've seen from Corrales in a long, long time. There's the hook. Slapped a little bit with those two hooks. Otherwise, they would have done more damage, but they landed. Good indication of how Corrales is controlling this fight. Well, this was the final round of the first fight. Round six, scheduled for 12. Buddy McGirt telling Casamayor through an interpreter in the corner, pick it up this round. We'll see what happens. Well, here's the danger for Casamayor. Let's just assume that the judges are agreeing with us that most of these rounds, I have all of them for Corrales, are going Corrales' way. It means Joe Casamayor has to come out of the game plan they uh, created for him, and he's gonna have to be more aggressive, and we know that creates issues against Corrales for him. But he's doing it. Let's see how it plays out. So far, the, the left hand of Casamayor, which was so damaging to Corrales in the first fight, has not been a factor here in the rematch. There's that straight left that came in when Corrales got on the inside and left himself exposed. Corrales doubling up on the jab, holding off with the right, but keeping Casamayor at bay. And there he countered with the jab. There's only one inch difference in reach. There's a huge height advantage, of course, for Corrales. But you would look and think the reach was a bigger advantage for Corrales. Nice left hook to the head by uh, Corrales in that sequence. Casamayor well really on his bike now. Again, the counter left hook from Corrales. This is a very, very sharp performance by him so far. Maybe it's the bike he received from Fidel Castro when he won the gold medal in 92 for Cuba and promptly traded it in for a pig so he could feed his family. Under a minute 20 left, round six. Good footwork followed by a good left hand of the belly by Casamayor. Don't punch, don't punch, Steph. Watch your heads coming in, guys. Cabeza, cabeza. No knockdowns, no cuts. It's been a uh, relatively clean fight. Casamayor in the white, Corrales in the blue. Casamayor with a very good right jab. You know, he wants to throw that punch more, but Corrales has countered it so well with the left hook that he's loath to initiate the action with that punch. Little mouse maybe developing under the uh, right eye of Casamayor. There's the defense of Corrales. That's the big difference. <laughs> and recall Casamayor had a big well on his forehead in the first fight on the class of heads. Now Casamayor, that's taunting. Des that's desperation by Casamayor. That shows you he, he is befuddled. Right now, he does not know what to do. And resorting to those tactics. This is what's, this is what's doing well for you is when you keep forcing them over your left. Okay? Now, you have to maintain rhythm, baby. I know you're walking them down, but it maintain a little bit always, a little okay. bit of herky-jerky, okay? Now, here's where I want you to start picking the jab up. Yeah, we, gotta, we gotta go get this title. Let's stay low, let's stop backing them up. You gotta stop backing them up now. Diego Corrales has shown very good defense. He was ducking that straight left hand before Casamayor threw it. That's different than the first fight, and then, Landing the straight right hand and the counter left hooks. It's been a classic boxer puncher performance by Diego Corrales. And now, now we begin to sense the urgency by Buddy McGirt. 
in the corner between rounds six and seven. It's the halfway point on the judges' cards in the first fight. Casamayor was ahead by four, four, and two points. Tonight, he could be behind by that many. What do you have it at? I have scored every single round for Diego Corrales. The first round was in question. Nice exchange by both fighters. I believe Corrales is ahead by six points in this fight. So Al Bernstein with Corrales ahead by a substantial margin here in the rematch. And even if the judges have it less, which they very well might, you have to believe Corrales is ahead in this match. Round seven, scheduled for 12. And here's the problem. Buddy McGirt is the one that's forced to change strategy. He has to tell his fighters, get low and go in. That is fraught with danger in this fight, that strategy. But what choice does he have? They believe he's far behind as well. There's the left hand that pushes Corrales back a bit. Got to do that more often to get back into this one. Stay up, stay up, Joel. Now we bring up the question once again. You wonder, does a trainer or how much does a trainer make a difference? Well, there's, there's two things that have happened in this fight. Clearly, Corrales has added a few weapons. He is throwing the counter right hand after Corrales throws the left. He's using his jab much more than he did in the first fight, and they've created a strategy that involves the jab to keep... Oh, there's the hook again. He's throwing it enough, just enough, in this fight. So there are weapons in this fight that Corrales didn't have in the last fight. Whether Goosen is completely responsible for them, which he may be, or whether Corrales just picked up on it, we don't know, but you have to give Goosen credit. It has been a superb game plan so far. Corrales scoring in that flurry. Perhaps not dominating, but controlling the fight. Diego Corrales. Another good left hook upstairs by Corrales. Again, backing Casaboy up right into his own corner. And a right hand off the face by Corrales. When you're five foot ten and you fight like this as a boxer puncher with the kind of power that Corrales has, and you pay attention to defense, you're very tough to beat in the 130-pound division. Of course, we still have some rounds to go here, and remember, Casamar did hurt Corrales in the first fight. And there's a left hand that lands, so we don't want to be presumptuous about this, but so far, Corrales has had an answer for everything Casamayor has done, primarily with the great counter puncher. Yes, yeah, so far to this point, Corrales in the rematch has solved the puzzle of Joel Casamayor, and again, Casamayor clowns around with the shimmying of the shoulders as the bell sounds for round seven. We look back and see Casamayor getting pushed back by Corrales. They're working on the inside. And he's leading with the head is Joel Casamayor, who, of course, has been known to do that. And as this fight goes on, if he gets more desperate, we may see a little bit more of that. We saw that in the Asselino Freitas fight when he got frustrated with Joel Casamayor on the right and Diego Corrales on the left here. A lot calmer in the Corrales corner. A newer, softer mouthpiece being applied for Diego Corrales after the debacle in the first fight. And here we go into round eight. And things really getting uh, difficult and desperate for Joel Casamayor. There were some very good exchanges in the last round. And Joel Casamayor landed some good power punches, but took some. And as this fight goes on, unless the judges are just completely different than we see, Casamayor will have to take more chances, and those are the kind of counter punches he'll be hit with. in the fight. Again, no cuts. Now, there's a way that Corrales can start to degenerate in this fight. And I'll tell you the way, although there it is. If he stops jabbing, that will be part of the problem for him. And when he stops jabbing in this fight is when Casamayor can make things happen. But he gets back to it every 15 or 20 seconds. Corrales extremely focused. 
keeping the jab alive. There it is again. And circling to his left. There's a countering left hand, partially blocked. Offered up by Casamayor. Maybe, uh, you know, Corrales touching his right eye, thinking maybe he was no, cut no, there. No, 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 no. Good, good, we'll have to good, take good, a look good. at that and see. He was cut over the left eye in the first round of the first fight. Here come the heads again. Perilously close. Please watch your head. Oh, this time maybe Casamayor no getting cut, the worst. No cuts, no cuts. All right. Steve Smoger signing off, saying no cuts. Everybody's okay. Don't you like when the refs do our commentary for us? It's perfect. Give a credit at the end of the show. <laughs> This is a very interesting boxing match. There's been enough, there's a counter right by Corrales. There's been action, and there is more than enough strategy to please anybody that enjoys boxing. And I like the way Corrales is moving to his left more, a lot more than in the first fight. Trying to stay away from Casamayor's power, and also allowing himself to throw the left hook and to double up to the body into the head. In that last sequence, Casamayor tried to throw the left hand, but Corrales' right stayed very high and it bounced off his gloves. A relatively clean fight. Despite Corrales' claim that Casamayor tends to fight dirty. This has been a better run for Casamayor. I don't think I could give it to him, but he has made a few things work in this round. But right now, close doesn't count here or in horseshoes because he needs to win some rounds. Good straight right hand by Diego Corrales, a countering left by Casamayor, and that's the bell for round eight. Casamayor coming on a little bit. You're playing a real smart game. Like you're going to back up a little bit. You've got to always nail him. Okay. That means you can't back up without putting a jab on him or a right hand or a hook. Okay. Because if you're going to back up, you're going to make it look good. Okay. I don't want anybody to think the tide's turning here because it ain't. Okay. You were boxing nice and you heard him there, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, the perception is that I want you to keep the pressure on from this end here. I need you, you know, to keep the Joe pressure Lisa on. And you know, Joe Gleason talked about perception yes, early in the round. Perfect. How do you feel? Casamayor yeah. threw some pretty good combinations. Some of these you're, punches you're, you're, kind you're, of getting there. Uh, but it, it set the tone for a portion early in the round. But then Casamayor uh, had issues. And much has been made of whether the heads are clashing and who's to blame. There's Casamayor sticking that head in there. And uh, some danger of either man getting cut there. And Steve Smoker right on top of him. As we enter into round nine, scheduled for 12 for the vacant... WBO 130-pound championship. Joe Casamayor, the former WBA champ in the white. Diego Corrales, the former IBF champ in the blue. Fascinating comment by Goosen in the corner. Don't let them have the perception this is changing. So when you back up, you've got to punch, or they'll think the aggression of Casamayor is working. And, and Joe did have a better round in the last round. There's a nice combination some of those punches landed. The judges from all over, Julie Letterman from West Nyack, New York, Donald O'Neill from Port Charlotte, Florida, and Steve Weisfeld from Rivervale, New Jersey. There's a good left hand that's scored by Casmayor, and he dances around to celebrate just a bit. Let's see if he can follow it up. There's a right hand, a right hook by Casmayor. There's a left hand, got in. Another left hand to the neck by by Casamayor, who's all of a sudden getting some really clean shots in. It's round nine, a minute 50 and counting. Let's see if the tide somewhat turns here for Casamayor. There's another left hand by Casamayor, who's scoring at will all of a sudden. The best round so far for Joel Casamayor. Even though Corrales is making some things work, Cosmo is counter-punching better and throwing a, more, a bigger variety of punches, not just throwing the left hand. Corrales' jab suddenly coming up short or being blocked by Casamayor's gloves. And he's throwing it with less conviction, Steve. And when you just paw with the jab, you get that, a counter-punch by Casamayor. All of a sudden, Corrales eating a lot of leather as we approach the final minute of round nine. Casamayor! Doesn't need to clown around. 
because he's behind, way behind. I think he feels he hurt Corrales with one of those left hands, and I don't know, maybe he did. And don't get careless like he did in the first fight after hurting Corrales. Good right-left combination by uh, Casamayor. Casamayor is getting the left, hook, the left hand in because Corrales is squaring himself up to him, dropping the right hand, and not countering with that right when the left is started out by Casamayor. He did all those things earlier in the match. Corrales is pretty good when he squares up, but sometimes you can be off balance, and it can work against you. Well, when you leave yourself square up and leave yourself open to a straight left hand from a left hand, no you, you have a problem. And he did that there. This is the best round for Casamayor. The first one, I think he definitely won. By far. We gotta stop playing. We gotta win out of all of these rounds. Don't stay in the front of him. Stay low, back him up with the jab. Shoot the left hand to the chest. Okay. You hit him. Fight back. Joel Casamayor had his best moments in that last round. And you notice, stay low and then throw the left hand. Very good strategy by Buddy McGirt. And it was working in the last round. In Casamayor, you see, using his jab a little bit more effectively and then getting there with the straight left hand. And you see the heads coming dangerously close to clashing. Joel Casamayor knows what's going on with that head. Let's just put it that way. His head is somewhat like a third fist, the way he operates. Casamayor doesn't have any knockdowns after round nine as we had a round ten. He comes out. Flailing, but he probably needs one here, a knockdown that is. Joel Casmayor stepping up the aggression against Corrales. Now, Diego Corrales has been 12 rounds only twice in his career. He has won all of those matches. Uh, Casmayor is four and one in 12 round fights. The one loss, of course, the very close loss to Asselino Freitas. Morales reluctantly touching Casamayor's gloves and then unleashes a right hand to the head of Casamayor. This yes. should be a very interesting round. It really is. It's a pivotal round in some ways. I, I have Corrales so far ahead, he can't lose on scores unless he gets knocked down a couple times. But that is not to suggest the judges have it that way. Right. So these final rounds, very important. So from this vantage point, Casmayor needs some dramatic stuff from this point on. I would think at least a knockdown at some point, but again, that's our scorecards. I've only given one round to Casamayor in the last one. Now look at how Corrales is not throwing the jab. There it is. Once he throws it with conviction, he makes it work. And remember, McGurk wants oh my.
and he steers Corrales down at the bell. I know that. Vince Anaheim, now this good. Look, there you go. You know, you fell asleep and you walked right out in front of him. Okay? You got to keep the chin down, hands up. Do you understand? You, but you, you got out of trouble good, though. Give me a towel now. Okay, don't worry about that. Come here. Now listen to me, Diego. Listen to me. You got to really have a tight defense here. He's going to try to come in and throw everything he's got. Here's where Casamayor landed a very good straight left hand. That was right on the point of the chin. Corrales was trying to throw a straight right hand. But instead of countering with the right, he was leading with, oh, his right hand was low. I take that back. He was getting ready to throw the right. His right hand was very low. That was almost a replay of one of the knockdowns in the first fight where his right hand was so low. We enter the championship rounds, round 11. Cosmeor late in getting his mouthpiece in. Here we go. Diego Corrales down for the first time of the fight of the 10th round on a straight left hand that he walked right into. Backhand by Casamayor. Getting away with it. Now I mentioned earlier that at least one knockdown would be required for Casamayor. That was a two-point round. Still on my scorecard, I have a five-point edge for Corrales. That may be a lot closer on some of the scorecards of the judges, but we have two more rounds here in which Casamayor could get more knockdowns. And, of course, there's the possibility to knock out because he's hurt Corrales. Joe Goosen told Corrales, I need you to win this round. Now, there's some body work by Corrales. He has not done that in all five, six rounds. Yeah, he has gotten away from the success he was enjoying in the first half of the fight. And here's where Corrales, by moving to his right as much as he's doing, is putting himself in harm's way to be hit by another left hand by Casamayor. This is somewhat reminiscent of the Casamayor Freitas fight, where Casamayor came on in the later round. In the right hand by Corrales! That gets the folks standing here at Foxwood. He hurt Terrence Mayor with that. All of a sudden, Casamayor crawls into a shell. But Casamayor showing what kind of a chin he has. He's a very, very tough fighter on all levels, and the chin is part of it. There's the counter right by Corrales, but he gets hit with another left. See, the counter right by Corrales has been dormant for the last several rounds very close round here Corrales now looking to end matters on one punch 50 seconds remaining in round 11 Corrales is making a serious technical error by constantly moving to his right right now very slowly and not throwing the jab he's asking for a left hand to be landed by Casamayor just begging for it. And a wild swing and a miss on a left hook attack by Corrales. Countering shot. Look out now. Corrales feeling around for blood on his forehead from a possible clash of heads. And in the meantime, almost really got into trouble. I didn't see where the heads came together in that instance. I thought that might have come from a punch. Good combination by Corrales. A very close round. Now I believe there's some blood on the forehead of Diego Corrales. Yep, around the right eyes, he goes back to the corner for the bell. This should be a most intriguing 12th coming up. Flash the heads, Joe. Good luck, baby. I tell you, come on, take that. Watch out, there's nothing, I got it, believe you me. Don't worry, don't move. Let me put some pressure on it first. Now look, you heard, you heard him that round. You understand me? Hold on. We do. You heard him good. Now look, it's the last round here. It's the last round. Hey, Penny. Okay, now, I need it as your best. Okay. Diego Corrales had some excellent moments early in this round. Landing the good straight right hand. That one stunned Joel Casemeyer, and he was able to go after him knowing that he was hurt. But again, the clash of heads became an issue. It's hard to see. Oh, there it is. Oh, my. Right on the eye. And that hurt Corrales. And because Steve Smoker didn't see it right away, he couldn't step in. Here we go. 12th and final round. And they
touch gloves. And this should be some finish. I would think Casamayor believes he's got to either have a knockdown or win dramatically in this round. I scored the last round even. I have Corrales still ahead by five points. So by your estimation, Casamayor really needs something dramatic here. Now, Corrales is not throwing the jab. He is moving back, but not doing anything. That's an invitation to disaster. Right hand by Casamayor, but blocked nicely by Corrales. Now, Casamayor going to the body. Time running out for the Cuban. This fight shows us how stereotypes can get us in trouble. We think of Casamayor as just a slick boxer, but we've seen in a number of fights, the Freitas fight, the last Corrales fight in this one, he has power. Can he do to Corrales what he did in the tent? Put him down. <laughs> Left hand scores by Casamayor. Just missing the counter hook was Corrales. Corrales missing, but Casamayor didn't. You know, if I'm Diego Corrales now, I don't throw that left hook very much. It's opening him up to the counter left hand too much, and he's throwing it too wide. He's not throwing it uh, in a compact manner, and it's asking for trouble. I would jab, 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 throw straight right hands, and try and move to my left. By your scorecard, all Corrales has to do is stay away for the final minute 20, and he's got it by decision. That's what I believe. But again, the judges may have it differently, but I thought he dominated most of all of the first seven or eight rounds. Now wiping the blood out of his eyes. It's coming down into his right eye, Corrales. Casamayor is not that active in this round. Now, he's landed a few punches, but he has not been really active to try and take this round. You never know what's going on in these guys' minds. He may feel he's ahead. He could very well. I think he's in the hunt here. Can you say trilogy? Trilogy in any language could be the case. Very close 12th round. I don't know if that's enough for Casamayor. We'll find out. We approach the final 30 seconds of the final round. Casamayor certainly doesn't look as if he needs a knockout to win the fight. Then he walks into a, a jab by Corrales. We come up on 10 seconds to the final bell. And that is it. Well, not as compelling or dramatic as the first fight, but entertaining. Now, I think that Diego Corrales boxed well enough in this fight ultimately to get the win by four or five points, despite the knockdown. And we have to see how much emotions are running high. There, there you go. That's good sportsmanship. Wow, what must be going through the mind of Joe Goosen right now, who is dismissed by Joel Casamayor? shortly before this rematch and picked up by Diego Corrales to guide him through to even the score. Some lobbying being done, obviously, as they put Casamayor on their shoulders. It's too late now, of course. The judges presumably have handed in their cards and they score by round, of course. Uh, and uh, it's this is going to be a very interesting decision. And it had nothing to do with a mouthpiece. That's an interesting scene. Sure is. Joel Casamayor coming over to uh, hug his former trainer, Joe Goosen, who he let go. And good for them. For the most part, both Goosen. I knew. I told y'all. I told y'all. He ready to face. Do you believe in me? That was gone? No, I was. I told y'all. I told y'all. I'm back. You baby. Show some new. Wow, big gash. For the most part, Goosen and McGurk and the, the fighters handled it in a pretty gentlemanly fashion the switch and we're happy to see Joe Goosen and Casamayor embrace after this fight and boy this will be an interesting decision. Goosen said no hard feelings before the fight but you really have to wonder and that is a pretty deep gash a slashing 
cut over the right eye of Diego Corrales and Joe Goosen. Boy, is he sweating this one out, huh? Look at him. Literally. Good job, by the way, by Steve Smoker as we look at him. He did a great job. In round 10, it was this straight left hand as Corrales got his right hand very, very low, was thinking about throwing a right. Before he could do it, he was nailed with a perfect straight left hand by Casamayor, a very compact short punch. And Diego Corrales went down. It would be a very tough round for him. It ended up being, of course, a 10-8 round. But in round 11, he was able to come back with some pretty good shots, including that straight right hand that stunned Casamayor momentarily. And you see the combinations of Corrales, even though everything didn't land. A common theme throughout this bout was the fact that there were a big clash of heads. That's the one that created the bad cut over the right eye of Corrales. The interesting thing is Casamayor managed to get through a fight without a point being deducted, which he hasn't been able to do lately. So did Diego Corrales get off the canvas to win this one on points? We are closing in on the big announcement from Jimmy Lennon Jr. And it's taking a long time to get these scorecards ready. As you say that, now we're set. Let's get it over to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a split decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Steve Weisfeld scores about 114 to 113 in favor of Joel Casamayor. Judge at ringside, Julie Letterman scores about 115 to 112 in favor of Diego Corrales. Judge at ringside, Don O'Neill sees about 115 to 112 in favor of the winner. He is now the IBA and the WBO Junior Lightweight World Champion, Diego. Well, Al, you had the right man winning, but it was a lot closer than you thought. I ended up having it 116, 112. They made it 115-112, the two judges that scored it for him, and Steve Weisfeld saw it for Casamayor by one point. Um, very intriguing fight. So Diego Corrales, the new WBO junior lightweight champion, tacks on his second world championship. Very emotional moment for uh, Chico Corrales as he does it by split decision, and he's able to even the score, settle the score in the rematch with Joel Casamayor. We are set for post-fight reaction, so let's go to Jim Gray standing by the ring. Jim? All right, Steve, thank you very much. A lot of sportsmanship going on here now. First, let's start with you, Joel. Luis de Cuba will translate for us. Uh -huh. Did you feel as though you had won this fight? No, I thought it was a job. It's a job. He says, you know, he did his job. He thought he won the fight, you know? When you knocked him down in the 10th round, did you feel as though you were ahead and that, or did you feel as though you had to put him away? In the 10th round, you thought you were ahead when you hit him? Yes, from the first round, I thought you were ahead, but that's the decision. He says, you know, from the first round on, he thought he was just dictating the fight. He was boxing him and keeping the control of the fight. Like to fight him again for a third time? Do you want to fight him again for a third time? Yes, yes. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Diego, congratulations to you. What changed this time around? Uh, you saw we had excellent head movement. We used our jab a lot. Um, moved in behind our jab. Used our head movement. Uh, stayed off center. And, and uh, for the most part, didn't lose any focus at any time in the fight. D did you lose some focus? Did you start I, to run I, out of gas? No, I didn't run out of gas. I'm going to tell you what, though. I mean, I, I had a little lapse in there and got clipped. And again, you know, Casimiro is, is an old vet, and, and, you, and you can't lose any, any focus at any point in time. Another left hand, never saw it, never saw him come off of it, never saw it come in, and next thing I know, I'm like, oh, no. Then you get the head button, the 11th. You yeah. went down in the 10th. Are you starting to think in your head, uh-oh, here we go again, panic no, time. No, actually, I, there was no panic. Stay on my stick. I'm too disciplined for that. Stay on my stick, keep my head movement, and then for, for, for the 12th round, I, I just knew, you know what, 
no need to let this gash get any bigger, not give me any reason to, to stop the fight. Let me stay, let me get out, out of range, and, and I have it. I, have, I felt I had it won, and let's just keep it that way. When I ask you both, how much was Joe Goosen a plus for you, and how much did you miss him? First to you, Diego. Joe Goosen was a, was a big plus. I mean, he, he really did nurture the game plan that, that, that we had. Uh, he just nurtured the game plan, and that's a rarity in the sport. You know, you have trainers and you have coaches, and I have to, I have to give Joe a lot of, a lot of respect because he's definitely a coach, and he coaches his game plans. He nurtures, he nurtures his game plans very, very much so. Did you miss Joe Goosen? Do you miss Joe Goosen in this fight? No, because why? What for? What for? Did he know your game plan, and was he able to? to put Diego in position to, to counter and know your every move. He, he says, listen, I've been with, I've been by myself, you know, the whole time. I'm, I'm, you know, it's, 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 you know, he didn't have no effect on anything. You know what I'm saying? Third time, will you do it again? That's, that's, that's my management, of course, you know, you know how I am, and, and I'm always eager and willing, um, at, but it's, it's, it's my manager and, and uh, He gave you an opportunity from last time. Would, would you be willing absolutely. to do it again? But he also told me no at first, too. <laughs> so, but actually, you know, once let them, I'm going to let the managers do their talking and let them do what they do. My job is, is in here, and their job is to do that stuff, so. Do you feel as though, Diego, you're, you're the best 130-pounder in the yeah. world? I do believe that. I do believe that. Yes, I do. I believe today I showed that I have the expert boxing ability, that I could apply pressure behind a jab, with a good head movement, I believe I show a lot of different things. Congratulations to you both. It was a wonderful to watch, uh, match to watch, and uh, it was a great fight. And let's hope hope you guys do it again. Hey, thank you, Showtime, for bringing me back again. Thank you. Thank you. Back to you, Steve. There it is. A final embrace from Diego Corrales and Joel Casmayor. Thank you so much, Jim. Diego Corrales by split decision in the rematch. Let's see how. Uh, the scoring specifically went for Casamayor versus Corrales. Here are your judges' scorecards. Julie Letterman had Corrales 115-112. Donald O'Neill, same thing. And then Steven Weisfeld had it for Casamayor 114 to 113. Well, you know, I had it 116-112. I thought Corrales had dominated a lot of the early rounds, but the 115-112 quite plausible to me. And as far as the press row scoring was concerned, George Kimball from the Boston Herald. Of course, all of this unofficial for press row. Stephen wow. uh, Toby, <laughs> MaxBoxing.com. George Willis from the New York Post. How about that eye opener? 116-111. I have to be honest, that one stumps me. <laughs> so they had uh, two out of three in favor of uh, of Casamayor. But it's Diego Corrales evening the score and winning the rematch five months and two days later over. Joel Casmayor by a close split decision. Your final thoughts, comments, observations? Well, let, let, let's be clear. This was fought at a very high level by both men. Diego Corrales had to make changes in his fight. He was a very good boxer puncher, and he did that. And Joel Casamayor, let's give he and Buddy McGirt credit. They knew they had to alter what they did midway through this fight. He had to be more aggressive. He showed a great chin. He throwed, showed that toughness and some of those interesting tactics. And he showed power, and he came back to make this a very, very good fight. And the winner of this can certainly feel like they're the best in the 130-pound division, though certainly Eric Morales, who just won a title, might be, have an argument with that. Yeah, over a very brave Jesus Chavez. Yeah. And also there's uh, uh, Carlos Hernandez, who's very talented as well. So a couple of good guys out there for uh, Corrales. But you did bring up an interesting point uh, towards the end of the fight, the word trilogy. Well, I... I personally would love to see these guys fight again. The reason is because these two fights were so different in their nature. It makes you wonder what the third fight could be like. Well, we've had a lot of fun. A lot of fun covering the oh, first yeah. two, that's for sure.